Hey everyone, it's TJ here with Avidyne. In the following short video, we're going to be discussing the ins and outs of the interface between the IFD and the Aspen EFD-1000. As always, nothing in the following video is FAA-approved data. Um, it's for reference use only. For FAA-approved data, please refer to the IFD installation manual. Make sure you've got the latest revision. Okay, so to jump right in, um, on the IFD interface, the Aspen EFD-1000. We're going to start off here <clears throat> by looking at our um, GPS Airing 429 out. So this is going to be the Airing 429 data bus that's going to carry all of the GPS navigation information over to the Aspen. So on the IFD side we're going to configure both IFDs the same uh, with the exception of SDI and we'll get to that in a second. Um, it's going to be low speed Gamma 429 graphics with intersections is the best setting there. It's going to send you the most information. SDI setting on the number one IFD we're going to set for LNAV 1. On the number two IFD we're going to set that for LNAV 2. What that does is that allows the Aspen to understand which GPS is selected at any given time as a navigation source. So on the Aspen, when you select GPS 1 or GPS 2, this SDI setting is how uh, the system kind of knows who's driving, the, who's driving the boat at the time, if that makes sense. Um, and the VNAV setting, we're going to set that for enable labels. And the reason we're going to set that for enable labels is assuming we're doing a WAS installation. Um, what this does is this pr tells the IFD to go ahead and provide the Airing 429 labels associated with vertical guidance for GPS approaches. So if you've got an Aspen EFD 1000 interface with an IFD and you have a scenario where they're saying they're not getting any vertical guidance, no vertical deviation on a, a LPV approach, nine times out of ten, uh, this setting right here is incorrect. It's VNAV enable labels. If it's set to disable, it will disallow those entering 429 labels from going out. So we want to make sure that's enabled. Okay. Next, we're going to take a look at the Airing 429 out of the Aspen. And you notice this line gets paralleled out to both IFDs. Um, that'll be something to keep in mind you know, if you're, if you find yourself troubleshooting one of these interfaces, um, anytime, you know, we've got data streams like this that are paralleled, there's a potential to get those A and B lines crossed up. So it's good to pay attention. The other part of, of that I'd, I'd like to kind of have rolling around the back of your head anyway is um, anytime that we've got data that's paralleled in multiple places, now we have multiple places to check and make sure that, you know, the data is being received which can help us narrow things down significantly when it comes to troubleshooting. So, on this front, this is, uh, again, notice this is the P1001 connector, so this is our main input. This is uh, main airing 429 config page. We're going to configure the 429 inputs on both IFEs. Um, GPS in is going to be set for low speed, and the data, we're going to set that guy for Honeywell EFIS. And what that does is that allows us to take advantage of most of the Airing 429 labels that are coming across that data stream. We get the best use out of our 429 data with those settings. And then we've got our VOR ILS Airing 429 outputs. Um, now you notice what we've talked about thus far has not included an ACU, but we'll we'll get to the ACUs in just a few minutes here. But for right now, we're talking just dual IFDs connected to an Aspen EFD-1000. So, on our VOR ILS Airing 429 out, this is the P1006 connector. This is going to be our VLOC data, our NAV data. Um, we're going to configure IFD-1 and 2 both the same as far as, as the configuration settings. Um, output is going to be low speed. Data is going to be VHF-429. We're going to set up our SDI on this page as well. 
IFD1 is going to be VORILS1, IFD2 is going to be VORILS2. And what this does is this allows the Aspen to know what's going on when on the Aspen screen itself you select VLOC1 versus VLOC2. And I'm also going to go ahead and discuss some of the settings on the Aspen side. Um, we get a lot of phone calls about this interface, and, and it's understandable why. Um, and ultimately what it is is we've designed the IFD to try to be compatible with as many things under the sun as possible. And Aspen kind of went the same direction with their EFD-1000. Um, but that confuses things a little bit uh, when we start drilling down into some of the specific you know, configuration settings, it gets a little bit complicated. So follow me here. Um, first thing we're going to have to do is put that Aspen into uh, configuration mode. And once we're in configuration mode, I'm only going to talk about the config settings that affect the IFD. Uh, there's a lot more in there than this, and those of you guys that are familiar with it know what I'm talking about. But um, right now we're talking specifically just this interface, okay? So the first thing we're going to go is take a look at nav setup A. And assuming that both GPS nav 1 and GPS nav 2 are both IFDs, we're going to set our nav setup A for GPS nav 1 config A, GPS nav 2 config A. There are a lot of different options here if that number 2 GPS comm nav is something other than an IFD. Um, and we'll get a little bit into that uh, in a few minutes. I'm not going to go all the way down that rabbit hole, but I am going to give you guys some really, really good gouge. The next configuration setting on the Aspen we're going to want to look at is the Nav Setup B section. Um, this is where you go in and you set up your Airing 429 ports on the Aspen side of the house. So, uh, Airing 429 in port 1, now it, obviously these port assignments assume that it's wired exactly as the installation manual shows. Um, you can use different R, or, uh, Airing 429 ports, I don't recommend it. Uh, it makes it a lot easier for the next guy to troubleshoot if he has to if it's wired exactly per the print. Um, so, without further ado, uh, nav setup B, airing 429 in port 1, we're going to set that for GPS 1. That's the input that's going to be receiving the gamma 429 graphics with intersections that we set up on the number 1 IFD. Airing 429 in port number 2, we're going to set for VLOC 1, and that's the input that's coming from the Airing 429 VOR ILS output from the number one IFD. Airing 429 in port three, we're gonna set for GPS number two. <clears throat> and Airing 429 in port four, we're gonna set for VLOC two. The next config setting we're gonna go look at is the nav setup C, as in Charlie. <clears throat> Uh, airing 429 out port speed we're going to set to low and in ports we're going to set those for low as well. Now again, we're talking about strictly an installation with an EFD-1000 and dual IFDs. We're not talking about including an ACU into this mix or anything else just yet. Okay. And one other place we're going to want to go is on the miscellaneous config C, as in Charlie. There's a place in here where we want to set that course SDI, whether we want it to be nav 1 or nav 2. And what that does is that enables the other end of those SDI settings that we set up on the IFDs for LNAV 1, LNAV 2, VORILS 1, VORILS 2. Um, th this gets the Aspen on the same page by setting this for nav1 slash 2. We're also going to go ahead and set our OBS display to enabled. Now with these settings and with it wired the way we've discussed, just a direct connection from the EFD 1000, here are all of the Airing 429 labels that that EFD-1000 is spitting out. Um, you'll notice we've got selected course, we've got heading datum, we've got lateral deviation, vertical deviation, pressure altitude, barrel corrected pressure altitude, true airspeed, uh, barrel correction, a 
handful of these the IFD is not going to do anything with. Um, they're specifically there for, for ACUs if there's an ACU connected. But all of the ones we talked about so far on this list, we absolutely will bring those in. Um, as well as course datum, magnetic heading, uh, and all of that good stuff. So it's it's really important to kind of wrap your head around how this thing works because when we add an ACU into the mix, it's going to get a little bit more complicated. Okay, so let's take a look at that. If we add an ACU into the mix, that Airing 429 data coming out of the Aspen, the EFD 1000 itself, instead of going directly to the IFDs now, it's going to the ACU and then the ACU is spitting that out to the IFDs. Okay, but if we add an ACU into this mix, not only is it going to change some of our configuration setting stuff, but it's also going to strip out a handful of those Airing 429 labels that are being received by the IFD. So let's take a look at that comparison real quick. So over, on, over here on the left side, <clears throat> we've got, these are the labels that are transmitted from the ACU on the Airing 429 output. It's select a course and magnetic heading. That's it. So you notice now we're not getting altitude, we're not getting burial corrected altitude, we're not getting true airspeed, any of that stuff. It's select a course, mag heading. That's it. So we've lost a lot of data right there um, just by adding in an ACU. If it happens to be an ACU2, for whatever reason, the ACU2 does send... Uh, more airing 429 labels than a straight ACU does. Um, not really sure why, but but that's the way it works. Um, so if it's an ACU2, that's the one we've got over here on the right. It's going to send out selected course, mag heading, pressure altitude, barrel corrected altitude, and true airspeed. Um, but you'll notice, you know, even this list is is much smaller than the list we were looking at when we were wired directly. So, there is a little bit of a workaround that you can do. And what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that Air Rank 429 out of the Aspen EFD 1000 right here. If it's just an EFD 1000 with no ACU, this would go directly out to the IFDs. When we add the ACU, this line now goes to the ACU, and the ACU is providing that 429 out to the IFDs. There's no reason that you can't tap into this from the EFD 1000 and parallel that line so that it's <clears throat> it's going to both the ACU and to both IFDs. Okay? Now, this this is going to be a little bit of a deviation from the prints and and you need, you guys need to be aware of that. So you, you will need to put on your 337 that you deviated from the prints and and what you did differently, okay? Um but if you do it this way, um, what ends up happening is on the IFD side where we're receiving all of that 429 data, our data stream is complete again. It's the same as, as if the ACU wasn't even in, installed. Okay, So we would go back to receiving all of these airing 429 labels. So, um, with an IFD interface to the Aspen, with an ACU, what we can get into sometimes, sometimes the ACU is there just for an autopilot, and that's fine. There are other times, though, that that ACU is also there um, because our GPS number two is a, a different flavor of GPS, like a, a KLN90 or something. Um, it might be there because our VLOC number two or our number two nav is, you know, a KX155 or a 165. And it might be there for the autopilot. So it's important to kind of pay attention and be aware of what's going on. There's a lot of different options with this thing. There's a lot of different ways to go about doing this. So, you know, if, if we start breaking this configuration matrix down uh, from the Aspen installation manual, you're going to see there's so many different possibilities for number two GPS and number two nav that 
you know, nailing down that combination can get pretty sticky sometimes, okay? Um, if the IFD is replacing an existing GNS unit, I know there's a lot of these airplanes where they had like a GNS as the number one GPS comm nav, and maybe a KLN-90 and a KX-155 for the number two GPS and comm nav as two separate units. Um, if that's the case, if the IFD is replacing a GNS in this setup, all of the settings are going to stay the same as they were with the GNS, so don't you don't have to worry about it so much. Um, but if you're replacing, you know, an analog number one, um, you know, GPS or comm nav, then this this can get, uh, you know, pretty confusing pretty quickly. So be aware. Um, this last slide I'm going to throw up here, this is a cheat sheet for you that I've put together over years of dealing with these things. And it, it, it's just kind of a configuration cheat sheet for you. So feel free to take a screenshot of this um, and use it. So what we've got is on the far left, we've got, if you've got dual IFDs with an ACU, here's how you're going to configure all of these things. So you'll notice the nav setup A is a little bit different. GPS nav 1 is config to a B. GPS nav 2 is set to a config A. Uh, nav setup B, where we go in and set up our airing 429 ports, we've got GPS 1, and then on port 2 we've got VLOC 1 plus ACU, because we've now added an ACU into the mix. So that setting has to be different. Um, port 3 is GPS 2, port 4 is VLOC 2, because of that wiring and, and that specific part of the interface stays the same. NAF setup C, we're going to go in and set that ACU to low speed. Um, if it's an ACU2 and you're using ADF or uh, RAD out or remote OAT, I think it requires it to be high speed, and that's okay. Just understand if we're setting it to high speed on one, we have to set it to high speed on the other side as well, on the IFD side. So um, I typically try to leave everything low speed if I can. Um, but again, if you've got an ADF or a rat out or remote OAT, um, I, I think it requires it to be high speed with an ACU2. Um, ACU config B, so now we've added another configuration that we've got to take a look at. Um, airing 429 out port, uh, we're going to set those speeds in accordance with whether or not our NAV setup C is low speed or high speed. Um, still going to do the miscellaneous config C. Uh, You'll notice down here, uh, course SDI, still we're going to set that for nav 1, nav 2. Um, OBS display set to enable. Here's where things get a little bit tricky. So if we've got um, an IFD as a number one comm nav GPS, and let's say a KX 155 or 165 or some other analog radio as our number two nav, but we do not have a second GPS in the system, this middle column is going to be our, our config settings, okay? And then over here on the far right, what we've got is if you've got an IFD as the number one GPS comm nav, we've got an analog number two GPS, or uh, an analog number two uh, nav, I'm sorry, KX 155, 165, etc., cetera, um, and an analog uh, GPS, for the number two GPS, like a KLN 90, KLN 89, we're gonna use these config settings. So like I say, you might wanna take a screenshot of this page, feel free to do so. Um, it'll save you a lot of pulling your hair out when it comes to trying to configure these things and, and figure this thing out. Um, so hope you guys found this thing useful. Um, as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us on tech support, and we'll see you in the next video.